Rembrandt's lighting is a powerful technique in photography that can be used to convey a wide range of emotions and moods in portrait photography. When we talk about Rembrandt, we're talking about the Dutch photographer. But in terms of photography, we're talking about Rembrandt's light. Rembrandt's lighting is one of the most popular or one of the most famous lighting technique in portraiture photography. I'm a portraiture photographer and I know a lot of you guys on my YouTube channel are portraiture photographers. And there are various possibilities on what you can do with Rembrandt's lighting. With the mood and emotions in mind, you can use Rembrandt's lighting for dramatic and moody portraits. You can use Rembrandt's lighting for light and airy portraits. You can use Rembrandt's lighting for romantic and calm portraits. It all depends on the kind of mood you would want to create. When we talk about Rembrandt's lighting, Rembrandt's lighting is characterized by the triangle created on the face of the subject you're shooting. The triangle can be very, very defined and can also be very, very soft. It depends on the kind of modifier you're using for the set shoot. There are varieties you can go with. You can go with a very big modifier, you can go with a very small modifier. To have a defined Rembrandt lighting, you need to use a smaller modifier and even smaller than what I'll be using in today's video. Usually it involves a single light source and that single light source is supposed to be placed 45 degrees angle to the side of the subject you're shooting can be the left side, can be the right side. And immediately you put the light source over there. You're supposed to see a triangle shaped light and formed on the other side of the subject's face relative to where you place or you position the light source. This technique of lighting adds dimension and depth to the photograph, giving it that cinematic and dramatic effect. It adds mood to the picture. By mastering this technique, you can create stunning portraits that will capture um, the essence of your subject. That's exactly what Rembrandt's lighting is about. And today's video, like I mentioned, we're going to create dramatic and moody Rembrandt's lighting. So we have Maya, and I quickly want to give you five things you should have in mind whenever it is you want to recreate Rembrandt's lighting in your studio, anywhere you find yourself and you want to recreate Rembrandt's lighting. This is, or these are the steps you just need to go through when recreating them. The first thing you need to know is the position of your light source, right? You're looking at 45 degree angle from your subject, right? So if this is where my subject is sitting, 45 degree from my subject, that's one. And secondly, I have to look out for the height of the light. So the idea of Rembrandt's lighting is creating a triangle right underneath the other side of where the light is on your subject's face. So right underneath the eye socket, you create a triangle there. So the height will determine how the triangle will be created. So what, what you need to do or what you need to keep in mind is how you angle it down. So you face the light top down as you'll be seeing me doing and the, in the video very, very soon. And the third thing you need to keep in mind is using bounce cards or fill cards, right? Because you're using just one light source, you're prone to having a lot of um, shadows on the other side of the subject's face. So using a bounce card or using a reflector or using any other fill light to fill in the light will help bring or will help the light to, you know, be flattering on the subject you're shooting. The fourth thing you need to keep in mind is the position of your subject. So always make sure the face of your subject is tilted towards where the light is coming from, right? So your subject will turn towards where the light source will be coming from. That's the fourth point. And the fifth point, which will probably be the least um, important one, but you need to keep it in mind, is you fine tune all these adjustments I just mentioned. So you run from one to four, you fine tune them and make sure it works. Something people miss when it comes to Rembrandt's lighting is the face of the subject you're shooting. Because when you take into consideration the nose bridge, how long the nose is and how slender or how thick the face is, it will then factor in on how the Rembrandt will be created on the other side of the cheek for the shoots. The first thing I spoke about was the angle of the light. First off, I need to make sure this is closer to you. Right. And the positioning is supposed to be 45 degrees away from you. So if to your side here is 90, yeah, I can go 45 like this. So 45 to 90. All right. So here will do the job for me. Now I have to think about the height. The height you're sitting, right? 
So bring it down and make sure it's tilted towards you. So I'm hoping they can see that, the tilt. And not forgetting, I always like to have feathering in my light, so I'll make sure I tilt it away from you a little bit. Yeah, and that's fine. The next thing is to bring in a fill. So I'll have to take a picture before I see what the fill will do. The next thing to do, position you so kindly, turn towards the light. All right. So what I need to do, let's see how, if I, so I didn't talk about the gear I'm using. I'm using a 5G Mark IV, an old Sigma 2470, which is not mine. I'm borrowing it, Godox trigger. And the light source is a Godox ED600 modified with the rice bowl, it's five centimeter from photo place. The inner lining is a white inner lining. So if you have an idea about how white inner lining works, we'll see how that one goes today. So this is a test shot to see how the light is. All right, this looks good. Let me flip this prop over here because it looks too much over here. Great. This time I'm trying to, you know, bring in a little bit of a foreground. So that's why the flowers are in there. I'm at 70 focal length. The light was too much. Initially the light was at 1 over 32. We're going to drop it down to 1 over 64. So F2.8. ISO 100, shut us with 1 over 160 and right and flash power 1 over 64. Great. So the idea is to create Rembrandt's light. And so, yeah, so with that, just turn the face towards me. Let's start with the close up first so that we can achieve that before anything else. Keep turning the face towards me. Yeah. Chin down if you can down yeah yeah so what we are looking out for is to make sure we have a triangle on the other side of the cheek we are not getting that and that's how we practice so if you're not getting it you keep on doing it you keep on readjusting and fine-tuning so you get it so i'm hoping just let me get that Fine tea. Okay, let's try this and see. Right, we are getting the it's in the face here. Yeah. Let's go. We're still getting there. Okay, let's see this again, bring the face towards me, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think we have it with this one, the, this particular last shot. Uh, so the triangle is created over there, not really defined because the light is soft. I mean, when you bring your light closer to your subject, you get a very soft light but I still like what I'm seeing. So I'm just going to take a step back and quickly take a picture with the set in it. Lovely. All right, I don't mind if I have your arms in there. Yeah. Oh, I like that. So Rembrandt's lighting is also used to create moves. Let me quickly bring in a fill light then we can call it a day. Oh, I am going to use this bounce card. 
going to support her with this. I'm going to turn this a little bit into you. Yeah. Let's try this one more time. Perfect. All right, so as you can see, the bounce card is reflecting some light back into our scene. One last thing, to make it more creative or to make to make the whole set come together with all the flattering lights and all, I know I wanted to start with one light, so we've used one light to recreate Rembrandt's lighting in the studio. If you have a second light source in a bigger modifier, like I have here, I'm going to use that to fill in the whole sheet. So I'm going to quickly do that. Then we'll call it a day. It's in a bigger modifier, a lux bounce. So let's bring it all together. Yeah, so I think that opens up the shadow right here and also fills in a lot. Okay. So Maya, give me some wild poses. You can drop the boob. Beautiful. Whether you're a seasoned photographer or you're just a beginner photographer coming into the business, mastering Rembrandt's lighting will step up your portrait photography game. In the studio, outdoors, wherever it is you find yourself, if you create appropriate Rembrandt lighting portraits or photographs or images, it just levels you up. So let's grab our cameras, practice as I practice, and let's become better in lighting when it comes to just one, one lighting.